Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for coming to the finals of the Cannabis Pitch Competition. We're very proud to highlight five particular finalists because they stuck out to the judges for a variety of reasons. The first one, actually, we are going to skip right over, but I do want to recognize a boring life. The farm bill that got passed in December is going to have significant impacts on hemp, CBD, normalization, and we have a number of emerging brands in that space in Oregon. A Boring Life is an excellent representation of a local company who is trying to take advantage of this in the way that is truly Oregonian. The judges focused on what building a brand was involved, brand identity, audience segmentation, and differentiators, and they thought that A Boring Life stood out. And it turns out somebody at the conference did too, so they've already won. Many people are familiar with Elby's Edibles. They have been delivering around Portland weekly for nine years. For anyone who does a delivery route and is involved in cannabis touching operations, you understand that a weekly route for nine years is walking the walk for a very long time. We are very proud to represent them as one of our craft local businesses who have been building this for a very long time. They're an established cannabis processor known for providing high quality topicals and can of butter based edibles to Oregon medical and recreational consumers since 2010. They make their own can of butter, they have a superior product in the market, and they have a constant uh, audience who follows them loyally. We are very proud to highlight them for you tonight. All right, hello. I know what it's like to have a great team around me. Uh, my name's Hovering LaPlante. I am CEO and co founder of LB's Edibles. I'm a cannabis patient, I'm a cannabis advocate, and I'm a cannabis entrepreneur. Um, I'm fortunate enough to have six women on my team that support me in what we do. We're a very small mom and pop company that do a lot, as Miranda was saying. We've been delivering and taking care of patients and now recreational consumers for, we're in our ninth year, um, and that's taken quite a bit of effort and dedication on our part but we truly believe in what we do, and we think we have something unique to offer to consumers. And that is a super high quality product that you can rely on to be consistent, to be delicious, to be look great, smell great, taste great, but medicate you really strongly as well. Um, we're a can of butter based edible company. Um, we also do topicals, um, but we're really known for our edibles. And we source really high quality cannabis from some of the best craft cannabis growers here in Oregon. We infuse that ourselves in our bakery here in Southeast Portland, and then we put out the highest quality product that we can. Um, we started off with a very simple mission, and that was to be kind and make great food. To that end, we've done a lot kind of behind the scenes that we don't talk about a lot, taking care of our neighborhood, uh, people who are displaced and living on the streets. Um, we have a giving rack in our lobby where we clothe people and we give them blankets, we give them sleeping bags. We try to do our best to help the people around us. We truly believe that um, the best that you can do is to help your community locally and then let that expand down from there. To that end, we've, started, we've gotten our products out throughout the state of Oregon. We're a self-distributed company, which is, takes its own kind of logistical issues and difficulties but we have really fantastic relationships with all of our partner retail shops and with all the intake managers and owners that we work with. We've cultivated these relationships over the last nine years, and if you're looking to invest in a brand that has actually been walking the walk and talking the talk, um, I believe that we are a brand that's been doing that. Um, it hasn't been an easy transition coming from the unregulated medical market into the regulated recreation market, but we've done it successfully with a really small, talented, dedicated team. Um, we've, my wife, LB, has been on the Rules Advisory Committee for the state. I've been called in to help the state in the rulemaking. Gretchen Palmer, who's our chief administrative officer, she has been on the different racks. And so we've got a really strong working relationship with the state that we really value. Whenever we have issues that we think can move the industry forward, not just our company, we bring those to light and we push for those changes to be made to the system so everybody can benefit. We truly believe that if everybody can, be, can benefit from the system, that we'll be all right. And so that's where we focus, is making a better system for everybody. We, uh, our history began nine years ago. Um, I'm a cannabis patient, like I said, and we were invited to a potluck deal, dinner and we brought our edibles there and people told us that patients needed to, to have what we do. At that point, we kind of transitioned and started making products for the medical market, um, making sure that we were focused on consistency and just a super high quality product. 
Um, I feel like we've been successful in that. Um, we've made many items through the years. We currently have a cake ball line, a cookie line, and a hard candy line. And we're looking to bring out more products into this space. Um, and that's what we're looking for the investment for. We need investment to consolidate some past debt and also to release new products into the space. Um, we work in infused foods, which is one of the smallest segments of the industry. Only 7% of the market is infused foods. Um, we actually have products that fill all the other categories uh, within the state. And I think that's unique for a processor. Uh, we can essentially make almost any product that uh, is needed in the marketplace. And so we're looking to find an investor that understands the Oregon market and the difficulties that we've all had over the past couple of years and sees the value in our brand and would like to come on board and help us take things to the next level. Um, that's our focus right now is expanding our product line within Oregon and definitely bonus points if we can bring somebody on who has the ability to help us take our products out of state. Um, we're also looking to eventually build our own facility and own that to add value to the company as well. We've got a very detailed timeline laid out for the next year as far as releasing products. Um, we, are, we have a really great plan for moving forward. We, again, just need the perfect partner to come in and support us, look at what we've got going on, and you know, say, hey, here's the money to make it happen. That's our focus right now. We are just looking to connect and focus and find the, the perfect partner. So appreciate your time and yeah, appreciate the, the consideration. They have Chex Mix, guys. That's innovative. I do edible food and Chex Mix is cool. Our next finalist is Essential Farms, a beyond organic OLCC tier two craft cannabis farm outside of Eugene, Oregon. The conversation about export has really highlighted the difference in what craft actually means and in what Oregon craft actually means. And this is one of those farms who's living up to those standards and demonstrating what that should look like. Ken Essentials was founded three years ago by my cousin Shane, an organic farmer, and myself, an owner of multiple businesses, each with close to two decades of experience in our field. Our basic belief is that you can grow the cleanest, highest quality cannabis while doing the least amount of harm to the environment. It's what consumers want and what they're willing to pay for. Connoisseur craft quality. 55% of millennials are willing to pay a premium for products that come with high quality standards. Flavor. 64% of consumers say that taste is the most important attribute about food and beverages they consume. Sustainable. 66% of global consumers and 73% of millennials are willing to pay more for sustainable goods. Do we have quality? Well, we have the awards to prove it. We've won first or second place in every major competition we've entered in the last three years. Shane? Um, our goal at Can Essentials is to produce the tastiest, cleanest burning cannabis in the most low impact and less harmful way. We continually work to reduce our environmental footprint, ensure that our grow methods produce as little waste as possible. We use closed loop regenerative systems to minimize our impact. Many of our fertility amendments grow in on our, our farm and other inputs sourced from quality uh, purveyors. We strive to grow flowers that are healthy as possible. It's no store bought, bottled or synthetic ingredients are ever allowed in our farm. How is it done? Our economically built greenhouses create the perfect growing environment. Hydronically heated floors provide warmth and uh, pr improving the bioavailability of nutrients to the soil. Careful placement of ventilation fans and circulation fans encourages transpiration and optimum growth. A powerful computer-based system provides remote monitoring and operational control of internal climate, creating consistency and fail-proof operation. HID lamps respond to the climate control assuring plenty of light and minimizing energy use. Our living soil beds are proprietary soil mix in raised beds sitting on top of native soil, providing plants with ideal root conditions and a direct connection with the earth. Our living soil is teeming with a diverse array of beneficial organisms. They work symbiotically to improve tilth and break down nutrients for improved bioavailability. We believe in feeding the soil. Our methods emphasize probiotics, fruit and plant ferments, and are crafted on site, as well as sprouted seed, herb, and compost teas. We amend with biologically active top dress, customized to plants and strains specifically, and we avoid animal byproducts that can lead to nutrient overload, which negatively affect both burn quality and full aromatic experience. Instead, we use mostly plants to feed our plants. Besides being a near-perfect balance of nutrients, they also contain terpenes and other bioavailable and beneficial compounds that commercial or synthetic amendments lack. This makes our harvest higher quality, more ethical, sustainable, more fragrant, bouquets, and abundant terpene profiles. We slow dry and cure in uh, climate-controlled drying rooms, and our flower is hand-finished, hand-trimmed. Small craft batches, large strain diversity. We typically run between eight to 10 different strains per cycle. This assures a variety of 
selections for our customers from intensely stony indicas to evenly balanced hybrids and euphoric uplifting sativas. Our flora is Dragonfly Earth Medicine Pure Certified. DEM Pure Certified Farms utilize solely regenerative and biologically intelligent cultivation practices. Let's talk some numbers. The average price of a pound of cannabis in the United States right now is $1,200. Indoors, hovering around $1,500. Down in Oregon, well, it's at $626 a pound. That's a 65% decrease since last year. Where are our prices? Well, although they've gone down, we're still at around $1,200 a pound on average, with our most expensive stuff going for about 16. We sell for more, but what about costs? Well, in the past three years, we've been working on becoming more and more efficient, with the goal of maintaining a solid gross margin in a market of dropping prices. In 2018, we were proud to say that we were able to get our prices down, 29% uh, decrease in the cost of salaries, an 88% decrease in the cost of soil and amendments, a 43% decrease in lab costs. That's a 35% decrease in cost of goods sold with the prices going down 27%. That's right, our margins are going up. The other key to sales is a diversified sales pool. We have uh, increased the amount of stores we're in by almost double from 36 to 62 in the last year. Our percentage of sales to the top 10 customers has gone down, that's a positive thing, from 82% to 68%. In fact, the top two stores have gone down from 43% of our sales to 37. But we need your help. We have. We need operating capital. We trim as fast as we have cash, and the pro faster we can trim, the fresher the flower, the higher the price. We need infrastructure improvements. Our greenhouses, we built ourselves. They're three years old. They're showing signs of age. We need to improve them to improve quality and to improve yield. We need marketing. We need to educate buyers and consumers about our brand and the way we grow through publicity, sponsorships, outreach, and social media. We also need to pay off some lingering AP and high, cr high interest credit cards. What are we looking for? 300,000 for a 25% stake in our company, 50,000 for operating capital, 150 for infrastructure improvements, 50,000 for marketing, and 100,000 for current liabilities. Why invest in Can Essentials? We're an established brand with over three years of sales and a reputation for quality. We have very high press uh, visibility. We have high sell-through rates in a market of oversupply. We're close to cash flow neutral, and we have low debt, and we're self-financed. The long and the short of it is, our short play is improved marketing and quality transfer to more sales. More sales takes us from break even to profitable. The long play, well, we take our proven uh, proof of concept and we duplicate it, either through direct franchising or consulting. This includes selling our inputs to others until they can produce themselves. So be a part of it. Together we can show the world that top shelf cannabis and sustainably grown can mutually coexist. Thank you so much. Thank you, Miranda. Thank you, everyone, for. Uh, hosting us here today. We all know that tech is already a very competitive space and Canatech is extra competitive. Also those of us who have worked in the cannabis touching know the wheel of death that is metric and an unspecified amount of your life that is just never gonna come back. So the last two uh, businesses that we wanna highlight today are helping us with those things, helping put a face on metrics so that we don't have to look at the wheel of death, make it uh, easier, better, faster, all the good things. So first up, we have Marijuana Software LLC. They provide metric integrated point of sale and tracking services to retail marijuana dispensaries and also provide a powerful API that enables vertically integrated par partners to power their own Wii apps, which is pretty cool. Thank you. you. Let me turn on my phone. And while I'm turning on my phone, if everybody will please go to rajasprinter.com. What I'd like to show you today is a problem that we've solved. And um, you have to bear with me. I invented this like yesterday. And I mean yesterday. But as a point of sale system serving the Oregon market, and we were the very first Oregon system to be approved for metric as OMMPOS.com. We're a system that has been grown and developed by the Oregon industry. We're a mom and a pop company. We're an American company. We are a woman-owned, black-owned company. So in that, we're a bit of a unicorn. When we got started, one of the biggest problems that we had was our system works as a website, which is great, because that means that you can run our system on any computer, tablet, iPad, cell phone, it doesn't matter but it was really hard to connect to devices like these. Now, dispensaries use printers like these. They're called thermal printers to print labels, to print receipts. You've probably seen them everywhere without really being aware of it. In the beginning, we did a lot of trial and error to get things like this to work. Um, printing from websites, it was a really painful process. 
If you guys would please print something up. Oh, this is from my wife. It says, hello, husband. I love you. Do your best. I want Chinese food for dinner, please. This one says, kill it, Raja. <laughs> this one says, some characters, um, can essentialist test print, thank you, Raja. Point is, good luck. It's really easy. All of you are printing to Raja's printer. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't, what's up, Raja's printer? It doesn't matter where you are. It's really simple to do. And we worked really hard to achieve this result using IoT or Internet of Things technology, Star Micronics, cloud print services, we've achieved a unique result that can be used by dispensaries, that can be used by growers. We've got these one-of-a-kind labels that already have the marijuana logo on them. We're the only ones who have this for this printer. We had them commissioned. And so it's bigger than a POS system. What we have here is really a representation of the American dream. My wife and I started this business in homelessness. Last year in 2018, we had a $100,000 top line, $106,000, with 30K profitability. We've come a long way from homelessness, and we're an example of what you can do when you take the 1% of investment capital that's directed to women-owned businesses and that's directed to minority-owned businesses and give us a chance to show that we have merit, to show that we can bring solutions to this industry that other people just hadn't thought of. Kind of like that episode of Star Trek with Jordan the Forge, where they were on the planet of perfect people, but there was a meteorite coming to blow up the planet, and the answer was in Jordy the Forge's little eye thing, because he was blind, and without Jordy the Forge, they would have all got blown up by the meteorite. It's a little bit like that with investment dollars. When you invest in all of the overlooked people, you get solutions for the industry, and that's really what it's all about. I mean, what else can I say about us is that we do everything that MJ Freeway does, we do everything that Greenbits does, but for a fraction of the price, whether they're $500 or $50, you can run your dispensary with our software, you can track metric with our software. One lady, when she saw that you could pay your taxes, your quarterly taxes instantly with our software, literally cried. She literally cried because she said, this used to take me weeks, Raja. Now it's three button clicks. And so I could show you some slides, but the point of the fact is, is marijuana software is creating tools to service the marijuana industry. We're creating tools to enable everybody to come along with a low level of technical skill and create their own apps that integrate with metric to express your own ideas in this marijuana industry because the marijuana industry is made up of people. The marijuana industry is made up of real estate agents and, and lawyers and bakers and accountants. Nobody, or no, that's not true, but very few people actually started out growing weed, just a fraction of us. And a lot of us are coming in from different industries and don't know how to overcome hurdles like the hardware or the technology to get started. And so we're taking over the nation. We're 10% of Oregon. We're expanding into different states. We're ready to go into 10 different states run by metric today we're looking for 150K investment, which is, in the scheme of things, really a pittance. But with that investment, we can take over 10 states today with software that does what the industry needs for a lot less than they're paying today. And um, it can be a win-win scenario. We're marijuana software, we're woman-owned, we're black-owned, we're American, and we thank you for this opportunity. Thank you very much. So last, but definitely not least, also in the Canatex uh, grouping, we have Hyena Systems, a cannabis inventory tracking system, as well as a dispensary point of sale system. Hyena Systems has been awarded the state contract for Iowa, beating metric. So we're excited about Iowa. Yeah. Hyena Systems. Last one, here we go. Uh, I'm Taylor Rambowski. I am the director of sales for BioMorris and Hyena Systems. Um, we are integrated with metric in any state that that's available to and we are the metric of Iowa. We won that contract over metric and that was pretty important to us to help build this resume. Um, we also have a POS system, it's named Hyena and that kind of rounds out the seed to sale solution. We hit all the timelines for Iowa and are currently under a three year contract with them. Um, they liked our ability to hit timelines, have a stable secure software platform so much that they gave us an extra 250k for the next six months in development. BioMorris is built on Salesforce. That's our back-end software. It's a huge company. They're a $90 billion company, largest building in San Francisco, and we use them for our data security. It's the world's leading task management, case management, and customer relationship management system. 
So our ability to scale and manage clients is infinite. Their platform is used in tons of government contracts and because it's incredibly safe and, and data secure. So as a government, they like to use Salesforce to know that they're not going to get hacked. Um, this contract over metric in, in Iowa has created a resume for us, albeit just one state. But honestly, there's only five companies in America managing cannabis at the state level. We are one of them. We're actively chasing down states for, for contracts and actively talking to states like Oregon about leaving metric and using us for their needs. We have a contact within Salesforce. They let us know when governments are searching for an RFP, request for purchase, that they get a hold of us and we submit the RFP directly to the government. So we're first in line in future states that use cannabis or that want to track cannabis. We're finalists in state contracts in Vermont. We have RFPs in New Jersey, Maryland, Florida. Finished one for New Mexico earlier this week. That's a pretty big deal. That's five potential leads for 2019. You might think that those seem like small markets, and right now some of them are. However, once they become recreational, their yearly sales will go up tremendously, as will our contracts. This is basically a diagram of everything we can track. Growers, producers, processors, dispensaries, clients, medical customers. We have all this data saved. If the state asks for tax reporting or the dispensary asks for tax, tax reporting, we can give them that information. Reporting is critical for efficiency. You can report, we can report on anything you can imagine. Um, is it hourly sales? Is it me doing sales versus a bud tender doing sales? Um, we, we can report anything that, that is imaginable directly from Salesforce. We also have dynamic search filters built in because bud tenders seem to come and go in a dispensary. I, I am a dispensary owner and there's turnover ratio is pretty high, 58%. So we want to keep the store educated and efficient. When, some, when a consumer walks in and says, I'm having trouble sleeping, we have a populated search list. So all the, all the bud tender has to do is literally type in sleep. The dynamic search filter pops up everything in inventory in the store for that consumer. Maybe they want it in edible. Maybe they want to smoke it. We can neck the search down even more. Maybe there's a price value attached to that. They only have $20. So it's a very robust search filter. We also keep a KYC system, just like the coffee shop. Know, know your customers, what KYC is. This builds uh, loyalty customers for dispensaries, which is really important. Dispensaries pay extra for Jane, or iHeart Jane, Baker, to have uh, these platforms built in for loyalty. Well, the, the bud tender can now have this in their store without having an extra bolt-on application to the tune of a few hundred dollars a month. We're built, uh, the POS system is built using React Native, which is what Facebook is built on. Uh, it's cloud-based, it stores information. Uh, so if the internet goes down, it stores it. When the internet's back, it uploads it to the cloud. We can scan either QR codes or, or barcodes. It's essentially built um, with this dynamic d data filter in every transaction. So real time, real inventory. If, if we sell the very last thing at the, in the store, it goes off our menu so somebody doesn't walk in and be disappointed. Four reasons why BioMorris and Hyena are important to the future of cannabis. The Salesforce pipeline, I think, is the biggest one. It, it really is the biggest um, data source and security for this industry, which we need. Um, the robust reporting, whether it's sales, uh, financials, medical patients, anything like that, I think reporting is, is very huge in this industry. Uh, we've completed the seed to sale loop. So our goal is to be the point of sale system as well as what we call metric now. Uh, we want to replace metric in states and, and have a full seed to sale loop. And the ability for us to scale rapidly and efficiently is, is robust because of Salesforce. Basically our investment needs go as follows. We, we want a development team, a tech team, sales team. Um, we have that now, but as we get more states and more dispensaries, that's going to need to grow quickly and efficiently. Uh, marketing at conferences, just like this one today. SEO would be really important. Get on the top of the Google list. Inbound leads. I think inbound leads are, are super important for this industry as well. Um, and we are literally one of five companies in America managing state cannabis. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much for the conference, and we wish you safe travels. We'll see you next year.